Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel and the e-learning portal, also at winewithjimmy.com. I am your host, Jimmy Smith, and welcome, very warm welcome. So we are here looking at what we always do, WSET self-help uh, revision sessions here, which I break into videos, which are normally somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes long, included. Uh, lots of diagrams, maps, Google Earth videos to really bring the subject to life, to help you understand it better than just reading the text that you are given with the diploma. And of course, that's the key thing. There's a lot of understanding that needs to happen. That's why we call this actually mastering the WSET diploma. Uh, we put in a lot more effort here that is what is found in your actual text because WSET requires you to add flair into your approach to answering these questions. So we always add in our bit of flair to help you understand these topics more. If you do have any comments or questions or concerns, you can get in touch with us here at Wine With Jimmy by actually commenting on this video below here on YouTube. Make sure you click subscribe as well. Uh, I will try to get back to you or by the social media that you see at the bottom of every slide or direct at our website, which is www.winewithjimmy.com. OK, so here we are looking, of course, at the level four diploma. Um, this is a part of the wine production section purely on viticulture, in which we have around 85 videos available on my e-learning portal. And we have somewhere around sort of 15 to 20 available as free content on YouTube. This is going to be looking at part one of techniques of canopy management and looking at more general concepts like vine density and row orientation. And I mention more kind of general concepts because, of course, when people think about canopy management techniques, they tend to think more about the specific vine training, things like winter pruning, summer pruning, vine trellising, overall vigor management uh, and things like you know debudding shoot removal shoot positioning uh, shoot trimming leaf removal uh, green harvesting and all of those very direct concepts about the canopy itself but in fact there are more general concepts about how the vineyard is laid out uh, in terms of its density and also about its row orientation so that's what we're approaching on this section. And here is actually how we're going to break down our four parts of canopy management techniques. So we are doing this introduction now and vineyard establishment talking about vine density and row orientation. Uh, but we will also have later videos, the actual training and pruning techniques, trellising systems and then types of summer pruning as well. So quite a few things to go through around the vineyard operations uh, that we must carry out in canopy management. So first of all, talking a little bit about vineyard establishment. So canopy management should be a key consideration when we are looking to establish a vineyard and the assessment of the vineyard site we've been through on many videos previously but it should really bring in the importance of the canopy as well and the actual vine in the vineyard so determining certain decisions such as grape variety of course root stock vigor uh, planting density row orientation which we're going into in quite specific nature in a bit and of course trellising systems now the choices regarding vine density will affect the vine training, it will affect the trellising. So all of this really therefore will need to be figured out and understood before the vine is in fact planted into the earth. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So here we have a couple of slides around density. So vine density. So vine density is the number of vines that are planted per hectare or per, per acre, however you, however you work, uh, of a vineyard, of course. Vine densities range from as low as a 
few hundred vines per hectare to over 10,000 vines per hectare. Vine density is calculated by the number of rows multiplied by the number of vines in each row, of course. Vine density will influence within row spacing and also between row spacing of the vines and therefore needs to be considered during the vineyard establishment because uh, too far away or too close can actually impact the uh, successful growth of those vines. So the optimum vine density is influenced by the vigor of the vine which of course the vigor of the vine is really, really keyed into the natural resources and the planting materials themselves, the type of variety, the type of rootstock and the environment we find it in. And then also what access is needed between the vines. So of course, human access, what we need in order to uh, cultivate and of course to harvest that vineyard. Vines that are low in vigor and VSP trellis, that's vertical shoot positioned trellis, can be planted very closely together within the row as the individual vines tend to be very small. Uh, so that's what we tend to see on the left hand side. So low vigor, high density and the vines are happily close to each other and, you know, said to compete with their root systems, forcing them more down into the, uh, the through the topsoil. Uh, and that's quite important in areas where maybe nutrients are a bit lower. Rainfall is also a little bit higher. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that, and that is your left hand side on the screen. Planting the vines with greater within row spacing would not maximize the vineyard land and that would leave gaps in the canopy uh, within the vine rows. And this is what you're seeing on the right hand side. So low vigor, low density would be really not maximizing the landscape, which therefore would have a huge impact on the bottom line profit and loss of that vineyard site. Uh, and if you think about the places like Grand Cru vineyards and you start to have low vigor, low density, then, of course, that's going to make those wines exceptionally expensive uh, in comparison. So that's talking about vine density with low vigor. OK, so low vigor and low vigor is created where you have probably you know, vines that are not so vigorous, but also in areas where the natural resources are not there to create much vigor. So low vigor and high density is what we find on the left hand side. What about high vigor uh, uh, vine density? So high vigor and vine density, we've got a couple of diagrams here. So by comparison, vines that are high in vigor will need greater within row spacing to grow and of course be in balance because these vines will tend to grow at a more uh, speeded up rate and they'll be larger than our low vigor vines. Planting these vines too close together could lead to overlapping canopies and increased shading and this could reduce ripeness and quality. So that's what we're seeing on the left hand side. So high vigor and high density is of course not what we're after there. Vines that are grown in dry regions without irrigation may be planted at low density. Think about some places in South Africa or in Spain. Despite not being large in size, these vines, and that's really so that the roots can spread out. So basically, if you're, you've got them spread out, you see this picture here on the right hand side. Now, if I do a bit of free drawing here, the roots now with our low vigor and high density, the roots go down much more vertically. But in this instance, they have more space to spread out. So we're looking down at the vine here. So if we could see into the ground, uh, into our soil, we would see root systems that of course can fan outwards. They pan outwards instead of going directly down. And this is in order to create, really collect as much water as possible, maybe nutrients. Uh, as well. So between row spacing also needs to be considered. Vine rows should be planted far enough apart so that one row does not shade the next, as we mentioned earlier. 
therefore vigorous vines that are high trained and trellised need greater spacing between the rows of vines. So think about uh, highly trained vines like Geneva Double Curtain, Scott Henry's, they will need the greater spacing between the rows. The width of any machinery also that might be used also needs to be considered when planning between row spacing, just like it would do though with the low vigor vine screen on the last slide. Overall, low density and widely spaced trellised vineyards are usually cheaper to establish uh, than high density, tightly spaced vineyards requiring less planting material and permitting easier mechanization. There's more freedom of movement throughout that vineyard, of course. And planting density impacts a bit more here. So we have a few things that are listed here. So the alley widths that are between the rows also will have um, other impacts. Specialized tractors that are required to work within the narrow alleys or to straddle across multiple rows. Uh, so we'll need them to be able to work within the, the, the fine density, of course. The canopy microclimate can also be improved as close rows act as a windbreak. Uh, for low vigor vineyards, light may be wasted uh, at midday on north to south planted vineyards. Um, operational costs also, such as spraying and weeding, are strongly influenced at total row length. So all of these things are things to consider, certainly with density plantations. And that moves us on actually to row orientation. So that's what we're going to look here. We're basically going to talk about on this slide, vines that are planted north to south with their rows versus those that are planted west to east or east to west. So here you have a one that shows you north to south. So row orientation will depend on both climatic and also logistical factors, you know, access to the vineyard, uh, how we're able to get around that vineyard. It is generally considered that north to south orientation, which you are witnessing here on this slide, provides the most even sunlight through the canopy, through the day. However, because conditions in the afternoon are usually warmer than in the morning, of course, that's the afternoon sun and that's the west, uh, we'll find grape bunches on the west side of the canopy, which are, of course, exposed to that more aggressive afternoon sun, may require more shading from leaves to protect from sunburn, certainly in exceptionally sunny places. So you may find a canopy which is actually much more denser on one side, and that is the west facing. Prevailing winds may also be a factor in decisions on row orientation, with certain grape growers choosing to orient uh, rows at a 90 degree angle um, in the direction of the wind to um, provide protection against that wind, which could cause issues, of course, with things like flowering and fruit set. And then finally, like I mentioned earlier, from a logistical standpoint, the row orientations that are parallel to the longest side of the vineyard is often the most efficient option in terms of what you can fit into that site. And then, of course, uh, access down long rows, for example, instead of lots of very short rows. Vineyards on slopes at an angle greater than 10% gradient will need to be planted also up and down the slope rather than across because machinery may slip, of course, uh, unless the vineyard has that flat ter terracing, which we do find in certain places. And let's just talk a little bit about row orientation, which is east to west, as you can see in this picture. So east to west orientation uh, with these rows, they actually intercept more light at midday, which could be a very big positive. However, of course, if midday maybe has a bit too much cloud cover, this can be impactful. Uh, whereas the previous, which is north to south, of course, the sunlight is spread throughout the day. So you'll get good, gentle morning sun, some midday sun and, of course, 
the west as well. But with these east to west, you tend to get the best that are at midday. In midsummer, more light is intercepted by north to south rows. But in spring and autumn, east to west rows must receive a bit more light. But north to south has an advantage that both sides of the trellis receive the same amount of light. So there is better balance throughout the vine than what you would find with the east to west. So that is why it is another factor why it's generally considered that north to south rows are what we are looking for. OK, so that brings this section, which is Canopy Management Techniques Part 1 to a conclusion. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about vine density and also then row orientation. If you do have any comments, questions or concerns, you can get in touch with me via the social media that you see at the bottom of every slide. You can comment on this video here on YouTube or you can get in touch direct at the website where you find my e-learning portal, and that's at www.winewithjimmy.com. It'd be a delight to have you on board as we have a huge wealth of videos. Remember the Viticulture here just for Diploma, 85 videos for the Level 3. We have over 110 videos. Uh, going. So there's plenty of stuff to get you stuck in there and help you with your confidence in your revision. There's also uh, flashcards. There's also um, mock examination questions and answers too to help you through all of these very important topics. So thank you very much for your time. If you do find yourself in London, come and see me at one of my schools or bars. So come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. Thank you so much. Music